Hey everyone, Tim here from QBKink77.com here to do a video doing a full review of the newly released Jelly Bean update on your Sprint HTC Evo 4G LTE. I've been running it all day and so far I'm actually pretty pleased with it. Um, they've actually added some enhancements that make things uh, more usable on the Evo 4G LTE. But anyways, before I get into that, I want to go ahead and go into settings and then scroll down, go to about and under about uh, you will see software version right there letting you know you're on 3156516 which is the latest so that would be the software version and then if i go ahead and select software information uh you'll see up at the top android version 4.1.1 jelly bean htc sense version 4.4 4 plus sorry all right so the first things i wanted to talk about is the initial changes the change log that sprint has actually posted uh, some things that this update has included is some Wi-Fi authentication improvements. Uh, personalized ringtone issue has been fixed for those of you that were having issues uh, with, with that ringtone. Uh, hyperlinks routing to the phone app from calendar description issue fixed. If, for those of you that missed one of my videos, there was actually a way to type in a dialer code that could potentially factory reset your device. And again, uh, you could open up the dialer from a specific link in the calendar. So thankfully that has been fixed. Uh, you can upgrade, uh, obviously it's an upgrade to Android 4.1 Jelly Bean as I showed you guys with uh, some Jelly Bean features which I will show you in a second. Um, browser performance has been improved, face unlock has been improved, uh, they've added Sprint Connections Optimizer if you go into settings and then go to mobile data and once in mobile data go to automatic connections. What Sprint Connections Optimizer does is kind of analyzes where you're at and then sees uh, and then checks to see if you're in a Wi-Fi area. If you're in a Wi-Fi area, then it's going to turn on your Wi-Fi radio. I always have mine unchecked. I don't have connections optimizer on. The reason being because I like to uh, just kind of manually control the radios on my device. I have no issues doing that. So it's up to you if you'd like to use Sprint Connections Optimizer. That's how you get to it, um, and that's kind of essentially what it does for you. Uh, there's been app improvements to YouTube, Google Plus, Gmail Maps. Uh, I don't know why they added that because those app improvements have been pushed by Google um, and are available to everyone. So it's not necessarily an update over the air. It's actually an update from the Play Store. So um, that's been added to the changelog. Again, HTC Sense 4 Plus. They've improved camera capabilities, which I'll get to later. And they've also improved the gallery. All right, so theme-wise, one thing I did want to mention is actually before I do get into anything, um, I'm recording this on my new T4i camera. You'll have to let me know what you think about the quality um, and the audio quality as well. So uh, anyways, I want to talk about the, they've kind of changed the theme color to it. When I go into settings, you'll see these icons over here are blue uh, when they are on. Um, you'll also notice some various changes such as if I press and hold on uh, the screen, you'll see down here these icons are blue, or if I go into my app drawer, you'll see down here more blue. Uh, they did go with a green theme before on Ice Cream Sandwich. They've updated to match more of that jelly bean blue color. So that's nice that they've, uh, they've changed that color up. I wasn't a big fan of the green myself. Another change that has been made is when you pull down the notification bar, you'll see it, it's just a little different style up there with the clock, date, and then you got a settings button in the upper right hand corner. But you'll also notice that you have power saver mode right here. And I really dislike this power saver being here. I would much rather have it just be a widget or something like that. I don't know why they included that there. You can't swipe it away. I can't figure out how to get rid of it. If anyone does know how, please feel free to leave a comment because I would like to know. I want to get rid of it myself, of course. Once I root and flash a custom ROM, I'm sure the developers will easily be able to get rid of it. But I've tried to go into settings. I've tried to go into uh, power. And then you'll see under power, there's options uh, for power saver. I have it off. I've tried unchecking all of these, just getting rid of them. And again, it stays there. So if again, if anyone can figure out how to turn that off, please let me know because I would uh, like to turn it off myself. Again, back into those settings, some changes have been made. You'll see an HTC Media Link HD. Um, I believe you could just use three fingers and swipe if you use HTC Media Link. Uh, my Wi-Fi is not even on, so again, I don't have uh, that capability. I'm going to turn my Wi-Fi back off. You'll also notice a Beats Audio section that you can turn those on and off when your headphones are plugged in. That's why it is uh, kind of cut out there because I don't have any headphones plugged in at the moment, but they also have made an individual setting for those Beats audio. Overall, I do want to say they have made improvements with the speed of the device. I feel like it is more fluent. Uh, when I went into the text messaging app, sometimes it would 
it would be laggy. It would uh, essentially, it would sometimes take a while, especially when more text messages came in. I would go into my messaging app, I would look at a message, and then it would kind of just say loading, especially when I backed out, it would say loading and then show up the messages. So finally they actually, uh, it seems like they've improved, improved the messaging application. When I want to compose, let's say I wanted to send a quick text to Google, 466453, I can go ahead and do so. And you'll see uh, the keyboard has been updated a little bit. You have more of that blue look, as I mentioned earlier. However, the word selection is still highlighted in green. I don't know why they didn't change that to that blue color. Uh, but you'll see that uh, shift key is in blue. The outline of the, the text box is blue as well. Um, overall, throughout the UI, user interface, you will notice that blue color that will show up. But you'll also notice that the, the keyboard does not have those arrow keys down there. You can actually turn those on and off in the settings. So you go in the keyboard settings and change those. You can also choose your input method. Swipe works just fine. I also want to make note that the... Uh, Jelly Bean keyboard, you can get it from the Play Store, it actually works great. I know some people had issues before with the stock Jelly Bean keyboard, so you can just go to the Play Store, type uh, Jelly Bean 4.2 keyboard, and then you can get the latest one with the, uh, with the swiping on the uh, Jelly Bean keyboard. All right, so I want to go back to the messaging application really quickly. I am in the settings, and some things that have been updated, you go, to, go into general, and under general, you will see there is an option to add, to personalize them, add a background, and change the color. So you can choose an image to have the background image. Actually, let's do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to gallery. They also have HDC background. So if I chose a picture, I don't even know what this picture is, but I can select it, and then it should change the background to my uh, text messages. So you can change the image. It looks like it's of some blinds in my in my house. So uh, there's the background. I can also change the color scheme. Um, you'll see the there's the one set by default. If I wanted to try, let's try something more bizarre like this orange and yellow. It looks like orange and yellow. So I go back and back again to my messages and go into this messaging and you'll see it has that background and the bubbles have changed. Just kind of wanted to show you guys that kind of a neat feature that they've included that you can personalize these specific messages in your uh, text messaging app. Sprint also did talk about some camera improvements. I didn't see too many changes to the software side of thing. You have your basic, uh, you, your flash, on, off, uh, auto. You can switch to the front facing camera. So there's me, you can switch back. You have your basic settings, uh, essentially. I didn't see any out of the ordinary. If you did, you can leave a comment, of course. And then you have slow motion video, scene selection, panorama, HDR, and group portrait. Uh, when taking pictures, again, very quick, zero shutter lag can just quickly take those pictures. You can scroll through them, uh, no problem. You'll see obviously some of them are gonna be blurry. I did also wanna mention there is an update to the gallery where if you go into the gallery, you'll see you have options to select uh, various places. My phone, Dropbox, Facebook, Flickr, Picasa, and SkyDrive. Go to my photos, loads them up. You have various ones uh, depending on the date. It actually sorts them just like that. So. If I wanted to go to the today's date, then it brings up all of the pictures I've taken from that date. So that's kind of nice that they uh, sort it by that. This will be downloads, this will be screenshots, that's why it's different. I took some uh, other pictures earlier today, actually. So they do uh, not just group them um, by day, it kind of depends on the time that you take them as well. So it's just kind of a bit of an update that they've made to the gallery. Also, with the Jelly Bean update, that you do have expandable notifications now. So I pull this down, you'll see I have a email notification that comments on one of my YouTube videos. Um, unfortunately, uh, generally on stock Android, you use two fingers and you swipe down and it expands the notification. I don't know why HTC has done this. Samsung did it on another device, but they finally fixed it. But you actually have to like pinch in to zoom in and out of this notification. So you see pinching in expands it, pinching, uh, pinching out expands it, and pinching in contracts it. Uh, so that's just a little thing to note that you can't just do two fingers up and down. It is kind of tedious because it is, uh, it just can be uh, difficult to do on such a, just a small notification having to pinch in and expand. It's much easier using just two fingers and pulling down like that. So hopefully they do update that in the future. Of course on stock jelly bean, as I said, two fingers pull down. You can also now on stock jelly bean use one finger and pull it down and it expands it. So again, with other, ver since this is 4.1.1, uh, other features might be added with 4.1.2 and of course 4.2 as well. You can swipe away notifications just like you could on ICS. So no changes there. To take a screenshot, volume down and power button press and hold both of them. Same as it was on Ice Cream Sandwich. When you do take a screenshot, you'll see it has a little uh, thumbnail image of it right there. You can actually pinch in, uh, pinch out and expand that. This is what an MMS would look like as well. 
Uh, it would come in with that little thumbnail. If you did want to check it out, you could pinch in without having to go into the application and you could see a bigger, uh, bigger preview of this specific image. You can hit share. And then of course it chooses various actions. I do like that they kept the jelly bean animation when you hit that share button. It kind of comes out like that and you also have the jelly bean theme uh, to this choose an action uh, screen. So glad they kept that but when opening applications they kind of overrode the animation. It is a little bit different but uh, also very similar. I do want to go ahead and go to the browser where it says internet and load it looks like a qbking77.com. There has been browser enhancements. Again, you should get a, a good experience. Uh, you have your tabs here, uh, what brings that up. You have a new tab or new incognito tab. So two various options there to open a new tab. You also have a menu where you can go back, forward, and add to. Uh, you have home bookmarks, history, save, downloads, find on page, and two things I wanna note. You have view desktop site, and you can just check that, and also enable flash player. They've embedded that within the browser, I believe, so you can just enable it. If for any reason you want to watch a video that's embedded uh, that uses Flash, you can just uh, check Enable Flash Player and it says Flash Player plugin will consume more system memory, impact browser performance, okay, that's fine. So it's great that HTC has decided to include that. That's one thing I do really like about this specific update. Another thing I do not like, I don't, can't remember if this was an ice cream sandwich, but it does not wallpaper scroll anymore. So you'll see when I scroll through the wallpaper is static. I don't, I cannot remember if it was like that on ice cream sandwich, but regardless of if it was or not, I don't know why manufacturers are choosing to not have wallpaper scrolling. Uh, of course you can install a third party launcher, but with their stock launchers, I think wallpaper scrolling is a really neat feature of Android and uh, manufacturers should definitely uh, keep using it. But that's really about it for all I did want to cover. You do have your basic jelly bean features. If you move an application around on top of it, it can actually move the app out of the way. Looks my, like my home screen is actually pretty full. There we go. So you see the voicemail did move if I didn't drop it exactly on top of it. Of course, you can create those folders like I have Google app folder right here that uh, that gets added just fine. Same animations like it had on ice cream sandwich. But again, uh, performance seems to be better on Jelly Bean. It doesn't seem to lag as much as it did on ice cream sandwich. Uh, Sense is very bloated in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of Sense myself. So again, I do plan to root it, install a custom ROM. Um, I will, of course, make an updated video if an updated video is necessary. If not, my current video uh, will work at qbking77.com. Um, I can check on that and just make a note of it and let you guys know if it works on Jelly Bean or not. Otherwise, that's everything I did want to cover. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know what you think about this update, especially if you have an Evo LTE. I did not want to just make a quick mention of battery life. Seems about the same as Ice Cream Sandwich. I didn't notice really a decrease or increase. So uh, again, if you have a different experience, let me know. If you have issues with it, let me know. Uh, or just let me know if you like it. I mean, just leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe to me as well. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up.